itself in the frozen tundra, the northernmost region of Alvaron, where winter is eternal and the snow and ice have buried the old world. There is an ancient white dragon that has never been felled. In his dominion, his brood vies for power, respect, and fear. And in the shadows of their elder, spread their might and greed across the frozen tundra, expanding their father's dominion and attempting to carve out their own. Recently, the eldest of this ancient white dragon's brood threatens to move further south into Alvaron proper and threaten the region. This dragon has already attacked settlements and broken its people. However, though the bastions of Alvaron tend to stick to their own dominions, the Crowned Mountain has a history with the frozen tundra and the ancient dragon that reigns there. They have commissioned a bounty for the death of the white dragon known as Calamor the Diamond Heart. Calamor dwells within the borders of the frozen tundra, across the glacial sea, and within the Ice Peak Mountains. A dangerous journey, one few can make and none have returned from, save the dwarves of the Crowned Mountain. A dwarven hunter named Boral Icehide has offered to be your liaison and guide on this quest. He has shepherded you for the better part of two weeks to and through the frozen tundra, and already across the glacial sea. You are now within a stone's throw from the Ice Peak Mountains, and Boro has no interest in entering the lair of such a beast. He will be waiting for your return at the tree line across the way, at a stone he marked this morning. And with that, let us begin our adventure. You have all been outfitted with various amounts of winter clothing. The snow is never ending. The constant hard winds gale past you, filling your nose with fresh winter breeze. And it starts to freeze the very blood within you. Regardless of the time you have taken on this expedition, it has not gotten easier, nor will it. You are all gathered here today in hopes of felling this beast. What would you all like to do? So what would we be doing right now? Would we be traveling to Alvaron at this point, or are we there? You have already crossed the glacial sea. You are now a stone's throw away from the Ice Peak Mountains. You are maybe an hour away from the base of the mountains. Mm. Okay. You guys want to keep moving towards the mountains? Is yeah. there anything in sight besides the mountain? Within this low visibility and excessive gust of wind, snow, and sleet across you. There's very little that reveals an, an alternate path aside from the straight forwardness towards the mountain. The Ice Peak Mountains can only be seen by the shadow that they dwarf around the surrounding area as the sun shines past them and just creates this darkness around you. Though it is still morning, it is hard to see ahead of you. So to help with the visibility, I would sort of like conjure a little like uh, like flame in my right hand as I search for um, as we continue walking. Okay. Throw so these tries, um, kind of like the beginning of a fireball, but obviously not, you know, throwing it. Um, as you control flame ahead of you, it brings visibility to the consistent soft snow that keeps caking ahead of you all as you continue to push no further and further north. It even kind of slows down the presence of any of the snow um, caking in around you. But even then, your magic is 
weak compared to the constant the constant gale that just blows past you Barmok will take the rear <coughs> okay Barmok takes up the further end who takes the lead I'll take the lead okay I will be I'll be right behind uh, Raymond okay I'll be uh, dead center okay so Kusakabi takes the lead you see after you're pushing for 10 minutes through the snow lifting leg over leg trying to get your body embedded into this constant torrent it takes 10 20 30 minutes to keep on pushing through this cold and your feet begin to get wet and damp with time it's almost at this point better to turn back than to move forward however first is the snow yes Barmak kind of is beard deep. Snow covering <laughs> his darkened beard, filling up what looks to be like cotton candy. As you push it, as you all continue to push yourselves through, Kuragath takes the, the middle, Kusak, Kusakabe takes the center, the front. Raymond and Corpier hang just behind with Barmak at the rear. You will eventually see just up ahead what looks to be the base of the mountain the wind blows at a constant coat of snow your vision is still obscured but you see the shadow of the mountain ahead though the ground continues to crunch and crunch after an hour of hard walking through this blizzard you eventually come to see what looks like an opening within the mountain, a sign of shelter and a reprieve from the winds, but what could also be the entrance to the dragon's lair. Alrighty. Can I cast detect uh, uh, divine scent? Sure. Okay, uh, I pray to my deity and ask for vision to see what's going <laughs> on inside this opening. Okay. Um, what creatures are you choosing? Um, I... Doesn't it just detect, uh, like, evil beings? Uh, it could. Um, Let's see. Uh, a powerful... Uh, Let me just see if it's, like, a uh, specific... Any celestial, you know celestial fiend or undead. <laughs> Okay. So, as you take the time to hold your holy symbol and project outwards, the range isn't far enough. The cave entrance is about 100 feet away from you within this um, uh, this consistent broken incline as you have to fight your way up the mountain itself and the snow. Um, you can continuously cast it as you move forward, and as you all take your time to push yourselves up the mountain um, there is no sense of anything fiendish celestial or anything that comes from the power of divine sense okay. do I so notice anything just by being a druid um, do I notice tracks you can go ahead and make a survival check or a perception check. Uh, either kind of stuff. 22. Looking through uh, the snow, um, it is the blizzard is quite is still continuing. There is low <coughs> visibility, though you do check the surroundings for any break in that. Um, from this distance, there's nothing to be gathered from there. Okay. So, so we're at the cave entrance, right? Yes, sir. Well, you're about right, 60 uh, or so feet now from it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You all choose to move forward? Uh, yeah. 
I'm still moving forward. Yes. Okay. You all approach the cavern opening. Within the cavern, you see there's no light. And as you continue to move closer into it, just to get the constant howling of the winds out of your head, you notice that there there's no light or crunchingness to the snow beneath you anymore. It is now replaced with hardened ice. Uh, so I'm gonna so I uh, start casting dancing lights into like a humanoid form to walk beside me. Okay. As um, Kusakabi is it first. Hmm? Is it ice in a natural pattern, or is it ice that looks like it was it, like exhaled from something? Excellent question. As you all enter, you notice that the ice is not paved too smooth. There is dustings of the snow that has crept in and then three globules just pop up and start to glow and then circle around Kusakabe as Corfir enters the fray. Um, your humanoid with a bit pale skin even for winter. Um, enters with a humanoid light figure next to him and you can all see that the ice sh slides down into a decline there's a silence that begins to fill as you can only hear the howling from behind you you can see faintly the path forward down this iced incline is almost like a slide that then rises across way deep into the darkness there's no texture to this path and it looks like you will have to slide down it. You can make me a nature check, um, Kurgath. Kurgoth. What? On the wrong sheet. 26. There doesn't seem to be anything natural about this slide. This terrain seems to be a bit deliberately created from the breath of a dragon that um would have power over the cold and want to make its layer as inaccessible as possible so this is not dragon size though right the, the, this is just like a cave where it's like it's like a trap it's like the, hey you slide in you don't get out the slide would is possible to be scalable it is not a flat drop it is angled um for you to descend but not at a comfortable pace this is ah. meant to bring people in and have the, be difficult to climb back out it would take a, a few athletics checks to find your way out of this it's not going to be easy is it and i say that to my dancing white humanoid mm. it remains still unmoving unflinching i i would um just for my character, I would kind of animate it in a way as if it was speaking to me. Okay. Or like reacting to what I'm saying. It brings out one of its ar globial arms as a light. It's light as an arm and um, taps it back and forth. Alright. Um, so, can I tell how far down it goes? Um, seems to descend about 60 feet from what you can gather. 60 feet? Uh, doesn't seem to be a drop that would hurt you, but it would be one in which, if you weren't careful, you might be knocked prone. Alright, uh... And it does, once you slide, sort of level out, but... Your light doesn't extend that far. Alright, uh, don't fail me now. Gargoth. And I say that to my dancing lights. Um, and I kind of sit as I slowly descend myself to begin to kind of slide down. Okay. What is everybody else doing? I want to go ahead and follow his lead. I wanna. Uh -oh. Don't follow me. I don't know what I'm doing. 
<laughs> Barmok will not let you have all the glory. Yeah. I want to. Mm -hmm. I want to create like a piton and okay. use this rope as like a kind of like slowly slide down. Okay. So um, like I, I use like Boris back and jam jam that nail into like a ice wall on the side. Oh, that's that's smarter than what I was gonna do. Can you okay. mind if I? Mind if I use that too? I have to mute, of course. Hmm. Barmok is not bitch. Barmok dives straight in. Okay. So Barmok slides down as um, uh, Kurgoth starts to ting, ting, ting. Starts to slam this piton into the, the side of the ice. Um, the sound kind of echoes a bit through, and then you can hear the sliding of cloth and uh, movement down. As Barmok starts to slide, um, make me a dexterity check, Barmok. So, as you're sliding down from butt first, you kind of slide down, start to gain speed and momentum, and you land on your back as you then gain more and more speed. As you do, um, your dark vision clears a path and you can see on the other end that it starts to level out and kind of rise into what looks like another opening, a passage. However, as you're looking at that, you don't really notice that some of the pieces on the ground are a bit spiked and jagged and you slash um, a piece of your arm as you descend. You take two points of damage. and you do make it to the bottom and as you do you try to correct and grapple yourself but as you do you just can't get up and you're considered prone for the moment but there's no immediate threat so you get yourself up on uh to your two dwarven legs stand up looking around there doesn't seem to be anything else around it just seems to be the slide that then leads to the passage ahead i'm gonna cut my hand and i'm gonna yell up he's clear uh, I have yeah. a hempen rope. How how far down was it? Sixty feet, you said. It was about sixty feet. Uh, how long is this rope that I have? About sixty feet. About sixty feet. Is there anything that I could tie it to? If I could put yeah. a zip line all, my way down. Yeah, you all have about you know what um you say, you have the same things that Kurogoth has. These little stakes of metal that you can just jam into the ground and stonework and it tightens with it, with good strong footing it should be a good weight to hold the other end uh Kurgo, by now has been able to facet at least two of these by the time barbmok has reached the bottom yeah I, after seeing him I, that's what i started doing as well okay so those of you who will be using this strategy may make a dexterity check as well but with advantage imagine that Okay. Might as well. Do a fucking flip on the way down. Twenty. Okay. I need two more. Click. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so um as Corfier and Kurgoff take the um sides closest to one another um they immediately they descend at a competent pace um not as fast as the great barmok but as they're descending uh Corfier, you kind of let loose of the uh, rope enough that it just slides you down at a good speed and in a way where you can still hold it if something were to get in your way and something does as you're gazing down you do see pointed straight up your person um, is a jagged piece of icicle just aimed straight towards your nuts and as you start you see it instinctually your arms f f hit this surge of adrenaline they tighten and you gr squeeze tight the rope and the icicle immediately stops about six inches from your nether regions um, and oddly enough because of the 
excessive speed you're moving at, the momentum kind of shakes it a little. It crumples to the ground and starts to slide down, and then you follow suit, making it to Barmok along with Kurogov unharmed and standing at attention. Um, I I conjure my dancing lights in a way that separates a little bit from where like the mouth would be, as if it looked surprised or like it gasped as okay. Raymond, you know, almost had an accident. Well, that was you. That was huh? you. That was you, Car- Corfin. No, I rolled natural twenty. Yeah, you missed the ice. Oh, oh, me. Oh, okay. you said Kurga, that's why. Oh, I thought, oh, no, no, I thought you said Raymond, um, sorry. I, well, regardless, you would have still made that, yes. like, okay. gasping face. Raymond, however, <laughs> um, as he's descending down, um, it's the paladin armor, it's heavy, it's bulky, um, he's got a lot of winter clothing on, um, there's not much room to maneuver as he slides down, um, Kusakabe, you see this first um, as you're both mm-hmm. sliding at the same time. You notice that he's about to hit a stream of jagged, sharp icicles pointing up the slide. Um, and you kind of call out to him, but by that time, you have to dodge a set yourself. You roll over and make your way down the slide to look up at Raymond. Um, you also take two points of piercing damage as you hit this fragile set of icicles that just slam into you. Talking about me, right? Uh, Raymond, no. Oh, okay. You you saw him and were about to warn him, but then had to dodge a set yourself. So you rolled out of the way, not able to warn him in time. All right. Am I flat on my ass at this point? Yes, sir. You eventually Ah. get to the bottom, releasing the rope, um, and everyone else is standing with you on on the bottom. And you've all slid down this and now look up to see that um, what you didn't see before were these very angled icicles in specific or random locations just pointing up, just making it difficult for anyone to just slide down with ease. Ah, ease were put here. From this angle, ice will move. That shape. But we survived. I put my hand out to to help Raymond up. Okay. I reach out and grab him and say that before that sucks. before you grab it, I just grab you by the scruff of the back and I just hoist you up. <laughs> it I might be it. thin Goliath <laughs> with strength <laughs> un unnatural lifts you up as you reach for the extended hand of Corfir. However, Barmuk is already waiting for you all at the entrance of the passage. As as he lifts Raymond up. I kind of do like a um, little hand gesture uh, at. Um, sorry, how do you say your name, Tom? Kurgolf. Kurgolf? I look over at him and say, Ooh, uncanny strength. Interesting. And I turn around and I tell my dancing lights, humanoid, all about it. He's an just so strong. Very interesting. And the, we the head talking. begins to nod as you. <laughs> Walk, it reshapes itself, sort of Iron Man style, pseudo armor behind you. Um, I, I bend down a little bit and to Raymond, is he okay? I think he's just a little uh, happy that we've survived this far. Uh, okay. So, Bar- and I- Barmuk, um, you're up ahead. And you see Kurgolf and Sakabe, Raymond, and Corfi are starting to um, meet with you. Um, what have you been doing? Bottomuck. Seeing me, I didn't hear the first part. Uh, Bottomuck has been flexing the whole okay. time Bottom-up. as they come down. <laughs> as you're all like approaching and trying to make it through. Uh, it's Barmok. Uh, you notice your dwarf <laughs> friend um, has found a very nice sheen glass um, yeah. mi- mirror, but it's mostly just like fragmented ice that has a nice sheen to it. Um, it doesn't even give that much detail, but Barmok <laughs> is just making sure that dwarf is whole. Yes. Um, Injured, but still beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Mosquito bite. 
Um, <laughs> looking ahead, you now see that there's a passage ahead of you that has a few meager steps made of ice. Um, these three steps up lead into a dark passage with no light to be seen. But it does seem to be burrowed or carved in deeper into the mountain. Is it dark? Yes, sir. <clears throat> I'm going to light a torch since I'm the only one here without a torch. Okay. It has been difficult for the two humans. Uh, Kusakabe uh, is kind I'm of. I'm pretty sure I don't either, actually. Oh, you are human. Uh -huh. uh, no. Yeah. Kus <laughs> well, Kusakabe and Raymond have had a difficult time um, pretending they can see. Um, wow. And <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> it's a it's a human thing. Um, eventually, Raymond um, gets wise and pulls a torch out and starts to um, co what was pre coated, um, ignites it, and Kusakabe, you can finally see. Um, and, I'm just yeah. <laughs> you get closer towards him and um, decide it might be best to probably light one of your own. Um, Everyone who pulls I just, out a torch, I'm just right? one from my hand. Okay. Raymond passes you a little torch. Yeah, I produce flame and all the torches that people bring me out. Okay. Um, as you can see, um, after Corfia helps light the rest of the torches, um, the ca the cavern looks very smooth in certain areas um, and tall, wide to an extent. Um, probably in the shape of a large creature that may want to leave now and then. As you continue your path, you hear the silence. The stepping of your feet are very minor, um, but any sound continues to echo down the corridor. Your light shimmers past the entire hall this, this, um, and sort of starts to reflect off each other very minorly to create this kind of this gray shadow as you approach and you continue to pierce the shadow and the darkness as you all move forward and maybe about a hundred or so feet of movement um, through this passageway um, and you continue to hear the sounds of silence as you move forward I look over to my humanoid light and I say ah, this reminds me of home it's so cozy I, uh, I have a big smile on my face Okay. Does it does it talk back to you? <laughs> ah, yes, yes. It is my friend. Okay, okay. I, uh, I, 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 I don't think it talks back to him. <laughs> I, I wave. No, I can hear you, right? <laughs> don't worry, it's okay. <laughs> okay, well, I don't believe it talks back to you. What is just also skeptical, but is afraid to upset the magic man. The magic. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Why right. don't right. Barmok and Kurogov give me a wisdom check? No oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, uh, my! 18. I forgot to turn off the banner. <laughs> okay. uh, you put a wisdom yeah. check. So, so Kurgoff, oh, you, you know better. You know, you know magic. He's, yeah, he he's lying. But Barmok, <laughs> yeah, that magic man can talk. He can light up. He could probably. <laughs> magic man. I wonder if it gets a cut too. I I, I see I, I see that Kurgoff kind of understands, and I lean in just a little bit as best I can to seven foot six posture. I'm just like. Between you and me, he's he's my only friend. <laughs> Kur, Kurgoth understand. Kurgoth hermit. Kurgoth no judge. <laughs> Put up a thumbs up. As you all walk away, and Kurgoth then looks to his trusted staff and nods. Yeah, <laughs> they don't they don't understand. <laughs> um, I would like. I was gonna pull to a rock make... out of my bag. I'm so glad you did that. <laughs> Well, everyone, um, since we're having brief conversations, uh, why doesn't everyone make me a stealth check? Uh-huh. Ah, uh, yes. Nothing With my loud-ass armor. 
Are you guys ready to be? Oh, I forgot to take off. I forgot to take off advantage. Jesus. Doesn't matter. Anyway. Right. Yeah, I know. It's great. Right. 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 I'm the stealthiest seven foot tall motherfucker. <laughs> All you hear is cling, 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 walking through this icy fucking cave. My druid, my druid body. You turn into a plant. <laughs> I am literally one with this cave. <laughs> No, nah, Grigal, if you turn into a piece of pollen, you start floating through. <laughs> I told you, I just melt into the walls. I just become this cave. Just fucking spit oh. my water. Thanks for that, Mike. Yep. I was going to say, do you have them mold into stone? I don't. No, no, no but I, it wouldn't be anywhere because it's ice. Well, the ice has to be attached to something. Oh, maybe you could do a control water. You just continuously reshape oh, it. Oh, you could do that. Ice. And just walk through. Just wave through. But uh, you can keep three of them up at five, uh, like a five foot cube. So technically, I guess. Well, luckily for you, you're seven foot six, and you only need two. I also don't have that, so. All right. That's other. You. That's other character. <laughs> Druids seem to be like a fun character. It is. If you get tired of playing a person, you can just. Say fuck it all, you don't have to speak at all, you can give him a wolf. <laughs> so, as you all continue to make your jokes and move around and talk to one another, um, you begin to feel the end of the passageway. Um, the sudden change in the ground becomes a little bit apparent to Raymond and Kurgal who notice that the ice starts to turn still hard. But you see ahead, dim light starts to reveal that the passage, the passage ahead has what looks to be pillars of hardened ice that reach up into a ceiling about 80 feet high. You see ice, sharp icicles protruding from them and even the ground, just like from back where you came. The ground turns hard like ice, but with the sound common of crunching snow. It's more textured. Fonts of light up ahead creep into the distance like glowing orbs. And there is a sound of drops of stone and the ground cracking ever so often. So immediately when I start hearing the dropping stone or ice, I put the shield above my head to protect me. Okay. Kurgoff and Raymond, um, you notice all this and show and kind of alert everyone that the changing of this textured ground kind of makes it a little bit more obvious with movement and kind of guide the party through where to step, where not to step. Um, as you approach, you see what looks to be Hello? an open chamber. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, hang on. My headphones are fucking disconnected. Okay. Big ass matter. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Hi, okay. What were you saying? Sorry. I'm sorry. My headphones are disconnected. Uh, no, you just said that you guys saw how the texture of the floor was and you kind of alerted all of us to like where to step and everything is texture change and we were right here to this. Ah, okay. This is like the forbidden underground of fire force. Mm hmm? Say that again? He says the forbidden underground. Oh. Well, you all enter this chamber. And see you. Um, what is ahead of you. I will Sorry. say that you see that the ground 
um, though textured, has areas of frozen water, ice that has kind of coated in, and you can see droplets of um, water just drip consist consistently on certain areas that are coated in ice. You see broken ground and rocks. You are within now the dragon's lair. Gosh. Nah, you like fun beacons. I, I still hold my shield above my head. Um, obviously, I can hold it myself, but I leave a little bit of room to act like my humanoid is helping me hold it up. Okay. Uh, and I walk up about 10 feet, and I look over at the fire and turn back. Ah, someone has been here. Interesting. You ready, guys? Have some fun, guys? He's always ready. Ah. I'm gonna lower okay. some of you because there's some background noise. Yes. I don't. I don't see how this will. We are here for a reason. Okay. Uh, can I start looking around? Sure. Uh, make a make a perception check. Uh, looking about, um, there doesn't seem to be much more than what you gather ahead of you. You do see um, what these blue circles are, just large pillars that shoot up into the ceiling. Uh, the ceiling is about 80 feet tall, um, but you also see these ice shards just protruding from the pillars themselves um, and even the walls. And the walls seem natural from the mountain. They don't seem to be made of stone or anything like that just seems like this tunnel or layer has been pushed and carved, burrowed into the mountain. Oh. I produce flame over this little frozen, what seems to be like a puddle, to get a little bit of water. I stick my hand in. Okay. And I wipe my face with it. So soothing. As you're all, um in the chamber now and now Corfir's igniting the flames um he starts to melt the wa the the ice into water um it takes a couple moments to do so um as that happens um from the darkness up ahead there are some light up that raises into a corner of the chamber um to the north west of you and you hear voices they call out of course this earthness uh, what languages does everybody speak uh, common speech draconic elvish speak common draconic elvish and under common druidic common elvish uh, draconic, elvish, giant. Um, this language is unfamiliar to all of you. And as it continues out... Orcas! Silence follows. Do we know which direction that voice is coming from? From the northern side of the chamber. Uh, if we look forward, can we... Do we see darkness or up ahead? You actually see some, quite a bit of light um, towards the north um, over here. There seems to be some cauldrons filled with um, uh, bright fire. Um, looking over there, um, there does seem to be some movement of, between the cauldrons. Uh, are they talking to each other or are they yelling at towards us? You do not know. Do I roll a mm. perception for that? Or? Yeah, go ahead and make another perception check. Um, it's hard to tell. Um, they have called out, but you can't tell what language or if they were referring to you or just in general. Um, and you don't know what kind of creatures these are, so it's hard to tell. Uh, 
Um, can I go ahead and take a look? Yeah, sure. Well, while this is going, while this, while he's going up, whatever, um, I don't really notice them arguing with my humanoid about uh, who's going up first. Um. Uh, no, Adam, so really quickly, mm -hmm. uh, I have that sentinel shield equipped. Um, so does that give me advantage on perception? Yes. Well, I'm pretty right. sure that. Uh... Yeah. It does. <clears throat> Because it says, uh... You have advantage on initiative it. rolls and wisdom perception checks, yes. Okay. 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 Uh, looking up ahead, um... Oh, man, it's dark. Um, it's hard to tell. But eventually, um, three shadows start to approach from the uh the northwest of you on this what looks to be a rise section um as they start to approach you hear orkadas this nahira uh my lights are hiding behind me it's okay relax <laughs> just in case I just see their shadow. They um, slowly start to move into the light. And what you all see approaching is these a bit large, but humanoid creatures. And as they approach with one of them having a torch in hand, they stop up ahead of you. What looks to be three wintered orcs with heavy leathers bound around them um two of them wielding great swords um on their sides start to pull them out from the side looking curiously at the now group of intruders that have entered the lair and are standing in a very um marvel assembly line here um <laughs> looking at the group um, they kind of talk and whisper to one another. He's tossed I, it there. I send my dancing lights over to shake their hand. Um, okay. The, dan the, the humanoid figure slowly starts to move towards the group very nonchalantly. Uh, I everyone slightly else sidle away from this group. <laughs> okay. You may put your but keep that keep that fucking druid staff ready for the echo. Okay. Anyone want to uh, move their characters anywhere? Bottomok stays here. here. Are you guys here to slay yeah. the dragon too? Perhaps we can work together. You get smacked by a club. As you say that, and everyone else is in the back, and um, your humanoid light eventually meets them um, in the middle. The two orcs look around, look at it, very curious, and the fuck is this? One of them <laughs> takes its the sharp end of its great axe and pokes into the light, and his axe passes through it. And they look at the group, sizing everyone up. I, I wave Stay. tiny bit. I have my arms kind of like in an open gesture. Hi. I have my shield and my hammer ready. Well. Strange to find orcs here. <laughs> As great axe equipped, he's okay. angry. As uh, Bormok starts to bring out his battle axe, realizing what may trans uh, fire here. I kind of, um, I kind of like do that. Like, wait, wait, wait. I, 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 as I hear the axe starting to be drawn a little bit, I point over to Barbok, um, message cantrip, just to keep it at the ready. Barbok is always ready. Uh, Anybody my fist started right. having lightning in their hands as my fist ball up. Wait, wait. We would we would prefer we would prefer not 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 to combat 
if possible. I look over at them. Uh, excuse my friends, we're, we're just here for the bounty, as you three large gentlemen must also be here for. Am mm. I correct? Make a persuasion check with disadvantage. Uh, they don't speak your language. You do seem peaceful. Holy shit. Okay. Oh! The two orcs, uh, of the two orcs, uh, with battle axes, one approaches you, uh, with your open hands, and leans in, and brings out a hand as well, with his uh, battle axe in his other hand still. I have shield in one hand. No, nothing in my other hand, and I put my hand out towards him as well. He's going to play shit. Okay. Um, he Beastmaster grabs your arm. Uh, and as he does, he tightens it very, extremely hard. Um, and then pulls you and grapples, tries to grapple you and push you in to the chamber more. I need you to make an athletics or an acrobatics check. Uh, uh, with advantage, right? But not advantage, normal, right? Just normal. Okay. Uh, oh, cool. Guys, uh, we're, we're friends, right? Friend, friend, me, yeah. friend. As you're like saying that, he's nodding in agreement consistently, but he grabs you, grapples you, and then holds you and starts bringing you deeper in. Um, you all see as he just grabs Corfier, grabs him by the shoulder, and starts pushing him in um, to the chamber um, and closer in. Um, basically, um, after taking him hostage. Kind yeah. of. Yeah. Okay, no, I'm coming. I'm. 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 No, okay. Bar Barmok is not dealing with him. that shit. As, no, I want to throw a hand next. As you, okay. As you move forward, the other orc starts Ooh, to push yeah. and rushes Excuse towards you. No, oh, oh, Wait. Wait. Okay. okay, this is escalating quickly. Oh, Sorry. Oh. Um, Barmok. What, what was the other orc doing? Uh, he rushes towards Barmok as Barmok moves forward, kind of sizing each other up tall tor big orc to stout dwarf um what do you do barmok i'm gonna smack him okay i'm no, rushing no, no, oh, I'm, I'm, right. I'm rushing next As to barmok he rushes forward oh, and oh you God. all try to so intercept sorry, barmok looks up at the tall orc it gets in his face and just kind of tries to growl and then i keep my i keep my hands up and I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't know what they're doing. As you're trying to do all that, the orc's just kind of pushing you further and further in. And as you all hear, and Raymond moves forward, and everyone tries to intercept Barmok, the sound of the slap breaks and creates a long paused silence. <laughs> oh my god! Right, come on. Stop being nice. Fight. Is ugly, ugly idiots. Fight. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit that guy that smacked. Uh... Barmok with a war no, That's something I'm you sorry. would be able to do. If after the slap, the orc didn't just stand up straight, confused, smiles <laughs> towards the small dwarf, and then in common, screams out, <laughs> War! Oh god, here we go. Uh, I so with that, I, I knew Mark, it Tommy. Common. I draw my fucking sword immediately. So, <laughs> that's something you'd be able to do after you've clicked your token and rolled initiative. So everyone Excellent. click on your token and then roll initiative. As the orc screams out after Barmok has slapped him. Wait, I don't see my, I don't see the token. Right, let me refresh. Uh, You're at the bottom. You're very far at the bottom. Yeah, I hit refresh. I think I just destroyed my computer, finally. All right. Because it was dark, I didn't scroll all the way down. So with that... Oh, there I am. Oh. 
How's everyone? Sorry. It's all good. Uh, so a reminder, Quark here is grappled. Roughly magic orc. Well, while we wait for Raymond. Um, why don't we... <laughs> if magic man hits Bormak, Bormak will throw hand axe at I. Okay. Raymond. Hang on, I'm sorry guys, my computer's been... That's right, I'll roll your initiative into the turn order. Okay, thank you. Alright, so... I can get natural 20. <laughs> oh, that's still good. So, starting things off, as after the slap that created the silence, after the orc cry for war, um, a grappled Corfear um, and the group prepare for battle. Um, and as such, we have Barmok at the top of the turn order. Barmok, the orc in front of you screams out war, has its battle axe in hand, and is prepared to fight with it, the other of its clan. What do you do? Okay, I'm gonna take my great axe and I'm gonna hold it high up above my head and I'm gonna hit him across the face with it. Okay. Go ahead and roll me an attack. That doesn't hit, does it? Um, oops. Sorry, one sec. Too many pop-ups. Um, let's see, you rolled a 15. A 15 will hit. Ooh. Uh, I also have oh, extra sorry. attack, which means I can My attack apologies. twice. I thought you rolled a 15. Oh. Why is I, I was scrolled too high. Um, an 11 does not hit. My apologies for that. No problem. But you do bring up the great your your great axe, and as you bring it down, the um, orc blocks it with the wooden um, handle of his, and as he does, it starts to crack with your strength, um, and he pushes off of you. Um, do you have another attack? <clears throat> Actually, can roll to attack again. It says. It says I get an extra attack. Yeah, you have yeah. extra. Attack you have two point. attacks per attack action. So whenever. You oh. Attack, you get, yeah. And a, and a um, reminder that you can also break it up with your movement. So you could attack one creature, move to another, and attack that creature. Um, no, I'm good for now. Okay, so you want to attack him a second time? Yeah. All right, go ahead and roll. Hold on. Mother! Okay. As you, Baramak as the tension starts to rise, and uh, you rush, you, the first strike is blocked. You turn and you try to windmill it around your dwarven stout body, and as it crashes towards its side, the superior orc in this moment just grabs it and holds onto it and uh, raises his axe above his head and prepares to strike at you. Um, would you like to use any movement? Uh, I would like to, can I sidestep to the left? You can. I can, I want to sidestep to the left, yeah, just like that. Alright, no problem. And I want to flip him off. Okay, you try to dodge out of the way mm -hmm. and move to his left flank, leaving an opening for the group. Um, with that, Raymond, it's your turn. Okay, I'm going to, I can't actually see how far away I am, because my is not loaded in fully. Okay. Uh, how much, how... You oh, are... Wait, there it is. wait see Five. if you can back out of the map, like... Okay, so I'm going to move 30 feet uh, in front of the orc that's grappling uh, Corfia, and I'm going to bring my great hammer down onto his face 
one-handed. Okay, so you rush forward, and you rush past Barmok, who's moved now to the left. You see the orc holding onto Corfir. Um, go ahead and make me an attack roll. Did it roll? Just give it a moment. Click it. I have uh, nothing yet. One day you'll have a PC. Yeah, I will. Uh, yeah, it's not going. Okay. Maybe let me exit out of that. Yeah, I'll click. You want to do a one handed or a two handed? Uh, it's one handed because I have my shield equipped. Okay. So that's a 22 to hit, which will hit with 10 points of bludgeoning damage. Raymond yeah. rushes forward, um, sees that um, Corfir is um, being uh, grabbed and pushed away. Technically, you would have advantage on that strike anyway. Um, but you rush forward, slam your <laughs> Warhammer into the um, unaware orc. Um, as you move oh. as fast as possible across the battlefield, slamming into him, he takes 10 points of damage, um, does not drop Corfir, um, but you do have a second attack. Okay, well, there go all my other ones. Uh, okay. I'm gonna go. <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll we all hit. Worry of four. So go ahead. And... <laughs> we all hit. So go ahead and roll damage. I would love to if it would let me now. <laughs> it's not like you anything. Deal nine more points of bludgeoning damage. Mm -hmm. As you slam it with in the ribcage now, you go low and then upwards, arcing it in a sort of uh, vertical slice and slam mm -hmm. the blunt end of the warhammer into the ribcage of this winter orc. As you though you hear him scream out, Ugh! Not us! Um, and with that, would you like to use any more of your movement? Um, you do see that to your left, there is a dark hole just beneath you. I'm gonna go ahead and sidestep to the right. <laughs> okay. So with that, um, the Orc Shaman's gonna go. He is going to... Looking about, um, he turns over ten paces to his right. Um, to, well, to his left, your right. And he looks down towards, uh, um, sorry, Kutasabe? Sorry. Uh, Kus Kusakabe and Kurgal. Mm -hmm. Sorry, your names are hidden. Um, and he looks across the way towards both of you. You, Kurakasbe, just creating starting to flicker lightning in your hand and as he does he raises um his two his arm and his staff in the air and as he does you feel the ground begin to shake and you see ejecting from the ground a wall of ice uh i dispel that um you would have to use an action unless you have counter spell i have dispel magic oh have, does you, that not work yeah, that's an action dispel magic is an action Ah, oh, damn. Counterspell is a reaction. Damn. All right. I'm just uh, ninth level, you know? All right, man. Why can't I move this? Well, that's not cool. Um. Sorry. It wasn't popping up, so I'll just do it manually. So it happens is he creates this wall of ice right in front of you. And as it does, it just goes 10 to 15 feet tall, five feet wide, not very thick, um, but it blocks your visual here of the, of the group, um, unless you move more to the left. But as you do, you hear more voices deeper um, from the chamber starting to call out um, as the shaman will then move five, 10, 15. That's all he can go. Um, and that will be his turn. Corfier, you are considered grappled at the moment, but um, D 
the orc has just been slammed by two Warhammer attacks by Raymond. What do you do? Okay, so... Now, while grappled by him, would I still be technically able to grab a weapon and attack? Yes. Okay. Now, grabbing a weapon, is that a free action or an action? Free action. Oh, okay. So, I draw my greatsword, look at this orc, and I roll my eyes. I didn't want to fight, and I go to stab him in the back. Okay. Um, do I get advantage on the... Um, technically not right now. He is... I would say it's going to be a straight roll. Let me see. Okay. We'll grapple is it quick. because I'm restrained? That's why? No, you're grappled, not restrained. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, that's fine. Let's see. I'm trying to get it, but there we go. So with grappled, uh, you do not have disadvantage on attack rolls. So I would say I will let it still be just a straight roll. Normally it would be okay. advantage because he's flanked, um, but he's still holding okay. on to you. All right, no problem. Well, well, just, uh, well, just as a heads up, you know your camera's on. Is, is it? Oh, yeah. Oh wait. Uh, well, hey, hi. How's it going? Your camera and your mic are on in roll twenty. Did I? Sorry, quick question. Um, just great sword. Is that the two-handed one, or am great I? Great swords are two-handed. You have to. Okay, sorry. Them. I, I, no, no. I meant to get my long sword. I must have clicked the wrong thing. Okay. Give me one sec. Because I don't use two. Okay, long sword is brought in. Um, and okay, so yeah, I'm gonna one hand him, and I have two attacks. So first attack is gonna be uh, 24. 24 will hit. Okay, 11 slashing. Okay. Um, as he, he as he is slammed twice by Raymond, you bring out the longsword as he's still grappling, holding on to you. Um, and as you bring your weapon out, he brings his other arm to hold you down. Um, with both arms now on your shoulder, you get a perfect opening into the belly of the orc and pierce through the guts and you see his reaction of tension as his teeth start to grit itself. You see these yellow dark orc teeth grit and growl at you as you pull the blade and pierce through its stomach, then pull it out and he falls to the ground. Right before he would, I see that he's about to die, I kind of follow him, kind of like as he's falling, or like, you know, dropping to the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and just, I say, uh, this was your mistake. And without looking, I'm gonna, well, let's say I quick turn around, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to, uh, attack the next work by doing a quick like turn around and slash. Okay. Twenty six still hits. Okay, nine. Uh, um, and I might. Okay. So it's been actually, you know what? I'm about to smite, and I'm like, ah, you're not. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. Just save it. Okay. Save it. Yeah. You strike then, the orc for nine points of damage as you get it in the back as it's trying to strike at Barmok. Um, you distract it momentarily as you cut through the leather hide of the creature. Um, it reaches towards its back like an itch and tries to grab at the wound. Uh, I spin my, my blade and size him up by moving over to the left, um, giving Raymond an opening. Okay. Um, and I am a turn. All right. So with that, Kusakabe, a wall is erected in front of you of ice. It makes it impossible to see the opposite side, but it is your turn. But I know where they're at, though, right? Um, just they move. Front. Well, you they haven't moved far. You can easily turn around the, that wall. Yeah, I want to go around it. It's like a uh, twenty-five feet to the orc next to Barmok. Okay. <coughs> Okay, so you rush and, around the wall, rush towards the orc. Yeah, um, I just look at him as my eyes glow uh, lightning, and I smile, and then next thing you know, I cast blindness. Blindness? Yeah. You sure? 
Yeah, it's level level two. Okay. Oh my god. What? On on an orc. On which orc? Yeah. The orc we're in front of. Uh, okay. In the middle of All right, no problem. Yeah. So you rush forward. He's got to make a what saving throw? I want that. Okay. I said this is just like that. You didn't have to hack that team up. <laughs> Constitution. Constitution. Okay. So you rush towards the orc. You bring out your light, your handful of lightning um, towards him. A bright light sparks. Um, let's make Constitution. That's gonna be a 19. I think that saves on your spell save DC. Uh, how do I see my spell save DC? So it you should. Go over the yeah, it should be. Um, let me see. It'll be right above. Uh, it's just uh, saying, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Your DC is 15, which is pretty high too. Um, but orcs themselves are hardy creatures. You bring up your hand towards him, and a bright light flickers, and it blinds um, the surrounding area. But as he does, the orc's eyes turn a blood rage. Um, you see it just look to be foaming at the mouth now, and rushes towards your direction. Um, what would you like to do? You still have a little bit of movement left. Yeah, not without an attack of opportunity. Right. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take it. You're going to take it and move? No. Oh, okay. Just gonna... You're going to stay there. Okay. No problem. Um, so with that, it's Krogaf's turn. Um, the wall has been erected. You see Kusakabe turn, a, turn in around it, and as he does, a blast of light. It emanates from the around the corner. Yep. Okay. So, I'm going to get over here. It's about 20. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to raise my hefty stone staff, gently tap it into the ground, and I'm going to cast Entangle, which at 90 feet gives me. Perfect. So I want to start it exactly where it is, and then have it go 20 feet this way. Okay. Going up the thing. So then he has to make a strength check against the 16. What's the what's the what's the uh, square 20 foot square starting from the point right? Starting from the point. Yep. The point is technically the orc shop. I uh, would be. Mm, I can't. Okay. Wait. Hold on. So that would be. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. There we go. So you want him on the corner, right? Yep. All right. So you look out of the, you look through the crowded mess that is whatever this melee is, and as you do, you see the orc shaman in the over there and cast it, and the weeds start to grow from the cold ground and through the cracks, these veins of um, of what look like tree vines just start to sprout and grab. He has to make a strength saving throw. Um, that's gonna be a nine. He fails. So for the duration, of these plants turn on or be restrained. Okay. So as it rushes and grabs, it starts to wrap around him and grapple him to it in place. Which reminds me, Corpia, you are no longer grappled. Um, so he is considered restrained. Which um, let's see, here is. Speed becomes zero. It can't benefit from any bonus to its speed. Attack rolls against the creature have advantage, and the creature's attack rolls have disadvantage. Uh, the creature has disadvantage on dexterity saving throws as well. Okay. Um, you don't see deeper into the hall. You don't see anything, but you do hear um, the sounds of more, um, a, more similar orc sounds come from that direction. Um, anything else? Uh, for my bonus action, a shillelagh. Okay. Uh, you whisper yeah, uh, into me the wood. <laughs> yeah. Whisper into the wood, and a faint magical glow appears. Um, Sorry, buddy, but we're gonna have to hurt people. <laughs> With nah, that, we hit the fine. top of the turn order. Barmok the Red, you're up. I'm gonna have a great axis, motherfucker, again. Okay. Make me an attack roll. 
A ten. Damn Please it! Not hit. As you but rush forward why? to strike, you see a blinding of light from Kusakabe's hand, and you are blinded, and you're just like, "What the fuck?" And I'll be uh, <laughs> keep, keep going. I'll be right back. I just gotta run something to the front door. Understood. Um, so your first strike does miss, but you do have a second one as the blindness starts to wither from you. Oh wait. As that's happening, I want to scream, "What the fuck is your problem?" Yes. Yeah. And this time, finally. But 44 damage. Go ahead and roll your nice. Okay. Eight. As you hey. bring up the great axe, yeah. you slam it into the arm of the orc, who then almost drops his great axe at the at the time at the at the pain. Um, you hear, Noster. He do, two hands the great hacks now to keep it up and raises it raises it over his head and tries to strike towards you. Um, would you like to move I or anything? I want to dodge it. I want to dodge it. Okay, you attempt to dodge. With that, it's Raven's turn. Okay, I'm gonna move up, and I'm just gonna straight up jab him with my warhammer. Okay. Right through his face. Are you running Breaking. flanking by any chance? Yes. Technically, they have advantage. Okay. So I roll with advantage? You should be, yes. Oh. Wait, what? I don't want to be that guy. Oh, the dungeon yeah, master don't, don't is not on guy. your side in this one shot. It's up to you guys to know your rules. But you can ask me questions and I will let you know what the ruling oh, is. So a 26 will hit. Um, as Barmok slashes into the creature, the mighty dwarf wounds the orc, but you come in and slam it with your warhammer um, in, the, in the meantime. Um, it's still standing, but you do have a second attack. I do, don't I? <laughs> and hit him again through the face. 26 will hit. That would be 10 points of bludgeoning damage, will just be enough to finish him off. As you slam your warhammer into his ribcage, um, he turns long enough for you to bring your hammer back up over your head and crack into its skull. You see a spray of blood and a cracking of an egg that just indents into the skull of the orc as he drops to the ground. Mm. So with that... I love that sound. Um, these two orcs are down. Um, the shaman is over here still. Um, is there anything you would all like... Uh, you would like to do? Remove or... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and move. And move uh, right here. Okay. Pushing forward, you see approaching from the darkness um, two more. One more orc, um, which seems to be moving with it um, a dire wolf. Awesome. I'm back. That's the. Missed the fucking, uh, post. I uh, missed the fucking mailman. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no worries. With that, um, the, um, Raymond's turn is over. The shaman's turn is here. Um, as you've defeated two of the orcs already, the orc shaman is kind of grabbed by all these vines and holding, it's holding him down. Uh, but he's still standing, and as he does, he, he, uses the might of his orcish blood raises his staff up into the air once more i need raymond corfear and barmok to make dexterity saving throws um oh that's a nasty one mm -hmm. Oh, wait, I'm not. Uh, Bormok, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, no advantage. Yeah. Is that a unique skill to him? Oh, Jaws of Ice. Oh no. my god! Yeah. No, it's just we, we were running flanking, so he hadn't been in shock with his attack. No, I mean Jaws of Ice. Is Jaws of Ice a, oh. like, orc that, shaman only thing? No, that's oh. a unique thing. Over. Wait, I have advantage on dexterity saving throws. Uh, that would be for traps. That's dangerous. For traps and spells. Oh, and for spells. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Can I roll again with advantage? Yes. I'm yes, sorry. Right. Well, we'll roll, roll one, one more time. time. Oh, just yeah. roll one. Yeah, oh, one okay. More. Yeah. 
That okay. will be just enough. Good. Oh, um, <laughs> perfect. So you all take half damage, which is eight points of cold damage. As he raises his staff up from below you, you all dodge, but not 100% in time. These shards of ice protrude from the ground beneath you before being dispelled. But before they're dispelled, they all hit and deal um, eight points of cold piercing damage to you as you feel the tempered ice pierce your um, flesh. So that would be Raymond, Corfir, and uh, Barmak. Um, don't forget to put your damage, Raymond. Uh, how, how many? Uh, eight. Do I you was, since I you lost eight. Oh, you I didn't fail the deck save? No, no, no you, you succeeded, you but you take half. Yeah. half oh, okay. Um, oh yeah, no, I was asking because I thought I took four. I was DC 14, so you you passed. Oh, okay. no problem. Yeah. So, but that was his action. Um, he will <laughs> remain restrained for this round. Um, but with that, Corfir, you're up. So, I come over here, um, and uh, at yeah, the, at the orc shaman. I got some of these guys. I have two attacks here. 16 and a 19. They hit. Um, for what? You have advantage? No. No, no, I get two attacks. Really. Oh, okay. Well, the first one hits, so roll the damage. Okay. Um, actually, you do actually do have advantage anyway, because he is restrained. Oh. oh. Alright, I'm... So, Just the first I'm... one hits. He okay. takes... He himself takes... 12 from the first blast and then okay. roll again for the second with advantage uh, uh. how did I lose it already okay okay 13, 13. so my request is not a regular blast um, it's kind of like a shadow of something appears behind him for a brief moment slashes him in the back um, okay. or hits him in the back and the second time um, it appears on the other side as he's kind of like distracted looking over in that area okay a pair so. of shadow figures start to attack the shaman from behind and as he continues to look one way or the other each get a blow on his person um, with that would you like to move anywhere uh, yeah, I'm gonna move back, kind of like behind here, okay. and look okay. over at the at the rest of the group, and I'm gonna get all of them. Have right. my turn. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> so, um, after you fire that, you go through <laughs> to the other side of the pillar and grab some cover. Um, we have Kusakabe. Um, the two orcs in front of you have just been dropped, and uh, Corfir has casted some spells over towards the restrained shaman. Technically, you have advantage on any attack rolls on him right now. Um, so, just a reminder. Kusakabe? Yes. It's your turn. Are you sure? Oh, it's because yes. you saw me on the turn order. Uh, oh, my bad. Oh, no, you, no, you didn't. They do? Oh, no. I'm stupid. I'm gonna be he did. No, he did. He it did. is your turn. <laughs> what would you like to do? Ward. Right here. Okay. This area. Yeah. This green box is just... Is like, it? I can throw stuff at him. Yeah, the green box symbolizes a mass growth of vines that are trying to grab at anyone that moves through it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can I cast Fireball on that orc? Fireball, you would know, is a massive radius. If you were to yeah. cast it on him, you would have to cast it further back to not hit you. But you can do that. You could For cast Fireball. Fire, firebolt or Fireball? He said bolt. Oh, I heard ball, and I was... Oh, yeah. I, I did at first, too. <laughs> so, Firebolt, yes. You can attack him with Firebolt. Remember, you have advantage, because he's restrained. Okay. Okay. 
Now, wait, before you do this, <laughs> does this ruin my no. intent? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice, that will hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Damn, 14. Um, as he's restrained, um, you rush forward. You see across the way is Orc and Direwolf starting to approach the conflict. And as you do, you see the Orc Shaman still restrained and grappled um, by these va- these um, large vines. Um, and you push, point your finger towards him, aiming down your two fingers, and a streak of fire blasts towards the Shaman and ignite his fur and coat him in what looks to be these bright red flames. Um, he's looking pretty rough, but still standing. Um, uh, that's it for now. Okay. So with that, uh, Kurgolf, it's your turn. Oh, I completely forgot the orc's turn. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> they technically are 18, or they have their own separate thing? They were, or 15, whatever they, they were. They were 15, I think. I think they were just before you. Yeah, no, because the shaman, yeah, the shaman was 15, uh, it was 18, and yeah. then I think they were 15. Yeah. All right, so, um, one moment. I mean, technically, you would have to roll wolf, right? No, it goes on its master's turn. Oh. Oh, okay. So, they are... They were 15. They went before you. So, they're just going to go after Kur- Kusakabe now. And then Kurogolf will go. Since they've lost the entire round. Um, what's going to happen now... Um, Korfir. Um, you're behind the pillar. You're comfortable. You see the shape and layout of the dragon's lair. Very straightforward. Um, you've brought, broken your line of sight between you and the, um, the orcs. However, you hear from the right of you, WAR! And as you hear that, you look to the wall to your right that is kind of protected by this jagged ice shard popsicle yep. that's like looking towards you and through the wall an orc runs out past the wall rushes towards you and to your, su- to your surprise um, more orcs start piling out and running through this mirage illusion and as Jesus. they do um I roll my eyes at all of them. Mm-hmm. Just each one, just turn, turn um, and face, roll eye, turn and face, roll eye. As uh. they rush out, they flank you with their great axes and take two attacks. The first one will be an 11 to hit. No. The second an 18 to hit. No, I smack both of them away with my shield. Oh, what's your <laughs> AC at? 19. Oh, very nice. Oh, They crap. slam their shields in their their axes towards you the first one hits the pillar and cracks the ice you see pebbles start to um spill onto the ground you bring your shield up blocking the second great axe um that it slams towards you um with that the other orc pulls out a javelin and chucks it towards kusakabe uh he does not have advantage that's a 10 to hit um, I, I just think... step aside and I just yeah. I look at the guy who threw it. As you're and and my just eyes start standing going there, there. <laughs> yeah. As you're just standing there, um, lightning still surging from your hands. The javelin goes towards you while you're moving forward. You lean back, and as it does, you lock eyes with the orc, igniting your eyes with this white, vibrant lightning. Um, with that, it's. Kurogoth's turn. And Kurogoth, you see that these orcs have rushed in from out of nowhere. Um, and they're already flanking Korfir. What do you want to do? I notice none of them are like the shaman though, right? They all seem to be wearing uh, the same hides as the other melee orcs and are wielding great axes. Okay, yeah, no. So we're gonna, we're gonna try to finish. So 30 gets me just there. Actually, do I have 30? Yeah, I do. Okay. Good. So I get over here. I'm gonna 
bust him in the fucking mouth. Fuck him up, baby. Uh, technically 19 because of Shillelagh. Uh, okay. So with that, that'll def that'll definitely hit. Go to roll damage. Uh, nine. Nice. You <clears throat> rush forward, um, past the Oryx, past the pillar, um, and when you do so, you get to the shaman who is still restrained, and just as he rips through the last vine. Um, and freeze himself. You rushed over with your Goliath stature. Still taller than him, you bring the shillelagh down, crack him unconscious into the vines, and as his body goes limp, the vines start to grab towards him and submerge him into the ground. I love you so much, because that's exactly what I wanted them to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, uh, I'm a dungeon master, that's what I do. Yeah. I, I very much appreciate it because that was my whole like I want him yeah. fucking just pulled into it okay. and then uh mm -hmm. all I got left is I'm gonna show Ailey again okay <clears throat> okay so you show Ailey one more time we're at the top of the round Varmok you're up you have two orcs to your right flanking Corpier remember that if you flank one of them you get advantage on your attack rolls but I, I'm gonna flank one of them okay so Feel free to move your token. I don't know if it makes a difference, but does that dude's ice wall just... Um, it is not a concentration. It is a ah. status effect. Time, so time based one, Yeah, it's it la If you have stone shape or know that base magic, it basically lasts about an hour. Ah. So with that, um, Barmok rushes towards the orcs looking for fresh meat. Um, you have advantage, so oh. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Fucking. Yeah. <laughs> and I attack again. Oh wait, wait. You roll. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to me. So remember. Um. Oh no, you did it. Okay, that's smart. Uh. So remember, as a barbarian, when you crit, you have brutal critical. So, after you crit, you roll and. You roll an additional. Uh, yeah, not, not, not the second one. So, so you just roll one. So time first, um, you did 14 points of damage. On top of that, um, oh no, it, oh no, it rolled it already with it. Okay, so it actually added it. Oh. It just rolled low. Okay. Okay. So 14, um, and then double that to 28. So you do 28 points of damage. Okay, Jesus Christ. Tell me I kill him. You rush oh. over and... Ah! And the orc doesn't even... He's engaged. He's bloodthirsty. He's got his own bravado to show to this human. But as he turns just in the nick of time, you slash him right across the throat. And as you do, his blood sprays all over Corfir. Um, the orc Sorry. is basically dumbfounded speechless grabs at its throat in a panic but with the amount of power behind the swing you don't realize you didn't just sever his throat and his neck leans back and like a slim jim kind of hangs um uh -huh. by just pieces of skin and you see one spurt from the throat pop out and then the orc <gasps> goes down to the ground yeah yeah I, as the blood spurs over me, I just give a thumbs up. Hmm. He's mighty! He's greatest warrior! I want to spit on the orc. Okay. Oh. Um, that will use all of your movement. I'm just kidding. That's fine. <laughs> you, spit <laughs> on the, you spit on the orc. You, move, you want to move over him? Yep. All right. So you move over him towards the other orc. Um, you still have that second attack. I'm going to attack that orc. Okay, so you jump over Move. this one. You still yeah. have advantage, because he's flanked. <laughs> this is great. This is fun. God, this is ridiculous. Like, you didn't even, <laughs> you didn't even have to rage for this. This is crazy. So far. <laughs> I haven't had a rage so far. <laughs> um, 16 points of damage. It's pretty good. You not only flank the orc, but grab your great axe and try to push him with it. And when you do, you slam it into its gut. He tries to hold back, but behind him, you push hard enough with your might 
that it impales him into the spikes behind him. Um, he gets basically double penetrated by your weapon and the icicles behind him and gets almost stuck to the wall. DP. And with that, Ow. <laughs> that is pretty much your turn. Unless you want to do anything else. No, but I would very much like to raise the great axe above my head and just yell like a war cry. I want to okay. scream it right, in a make, mocking way. Make me an intimidation check. <laughs> okay. Add, you can add your strength modifier, so you can just make it a strength check. Oh, wait. No, I want to do strength then. Fuck. Yeah. yeah, you can just do a strength check. Twenty-one. Yeah. Um, after you just <laughs> stab him and then impale him and then scream out with your dwarven veracity, the kind of echoes across the entire chamber, and there's this flicker of fear in the orc's eye as he looks down at this stout dwarf, just almost killing him in one go. He might have to uh, reevaluate, you know, who the tough one is. Um, but, he does. <laughs> but more like that, this. <laughs> um, Raymond. It is your turn. Okay, I'm going to, uh, I hear that war cry, and I, I look to my right and see uh, an orc. I'm going to rush to him, feeling inspired. I'm going to bring down my war hammer again. Okay. Oh, no. fucking go. Make me an attack. 19 yeah. will hit. For eight points of damage, you rush towards him and slam him with your war hammer. Um, yeah. It breaks through his defense. Um, you still have your second attack. Oh, oh, no. 12 will not hit. As you break through his defense the first time, he then pushes you off your balance and tries to meet your blade. You guys lock weapons for a moment, and it's just a contest of strength now. The shaman's dead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. gone. Ah! Loser. Oh. <laughs> All right. You said it was a contest of strength and we're locked. We're interlocked. Basically, basically, you missed, and that's the flavor of it. Ah. Yeah. You're doing the samurai thing right now, where, yeah. like, you're gazing into each other's eyes. With... Okay, well, in that case, I'm going to blow my kid. And I guess I end my turn. Oh, okay. my God. So, with that, the shaman would go, but he's dead. We are at the top now. Uh, well, not at the top. We're at Corfir's turn. Corfir, um, Hormak has already slain one orc next to you and impaled the other. What would you like to do? So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to try to finish him off um, with a big smirk on my face. Like, a, almost as if I'm, like, enjoying this. Okay. Like, this is my plan all along. Uh, and I attack. Um, I draw my blade up swiftly, kind of like I'm holding, like, a dagger. Mm -hmm. Go to slice the throat. All right. So do remember that... Um... The damage die you have for the the great sword is. I'm, I did great sword. Sorry, no, no. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Okay. Oh, well, roll a second <laughs> time because it's not a crit. <laughs> we'll say the second hit is a crit. So go ahead and roll your damage for the first for the crit. So oh, okay. All right, he's dead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That was my fault. Sorry, I got rid of great sword. I'm just so cop. as you strike at him, um, it's not and, and, though it should have been glorious. Um, it's not. You kind of like smile and like carefully as he's trying to pull himself off the axe, the uh, the, the spike. You like with a pool cue aim your sword into his ear, and you're just waiting for a perfect shot. And then you thrust forward, and it goes through his ear and into its brain. And you just hear a very dead, just hey. <laughs> as you just I smile, get it into the ear, and just kind of like wiggle it a little bit, and then just try to like cook, like twist some of the brain, and then as you pull the blade out, he still remains on the wall. Ugh, that's disgusting. Anyway. anyway, so he's dead. Uh, yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I told you it wasn't that glorious. <laughs> yeah, especially after, especially after Barmok beheaded a dude, and you're just yeah, like shit. slow ear poke. <laughs> yeah. 
No, uh, I completely forgot that this orc was supposed to move. Uh, sorry, he's so far off the other side of the map, I can't even see him. Um, <laughs> however, the direwolf uh, would have gotten to here by now. So, I'll just say that they uh, have moves there. They haven't attacked you, though. Well, even, even with rough terrain? Oh, they don't give a fuck. They there? live here. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, it's my, it's my vines are rough terrain. Yeah, your vines... No, your vines are... They went around it. Okay. Yeah, they're not that stupid. <laughs> but they could have been. <laughs> uh, but yeah, before I move, I would just look over at Barbara. Kind of like disappointed look at the disgustingness that's all around. And I just I just slowly walk away oh. over to where we're going to Mel Gibson? All right. Oh, wait, actually, sorry. Do not shame, Barma! Yeah. yeah, right there. Boom. All right. Fuck you, work. So with that, Kusakabe, you're up. You notice that the orcs had to take a wide berth, and it's taken them all their time to go around Kuragalf's, um vines, um, his entanglement spell. Um, and it just stopped, delayed them long enough to not get a couple of rounds of attack on you. What would you like to do? Uh... I want to cast sleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, at what level? A moment. You can cast it at the level that it is, or a level higher to get more. So remember, sleep um, is, is good because you can cast it on a radius of people. Uh, I'll just cast it at level one. All right. So let's see. Level one, just click the Yeah, I can roll that, yeah. yeah. Hold on. That's the most aggressive scrolling I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> Poor mouse. 24. 24. That's really close. Oh. Um. Because I like you, roll me an Arcana check. Is it Arcana? Yes. Oh, that's oh, 20. Oh. Okay. So, as you cast the sleep spell, um, you're a practitioner of the arcane arts, but as you're casting the sp sleep spell, you're starting to realize it's not enough to put any of them to sleep it's close to maybe put one down so you focus your arcane energy and pick the one that you can put to sleep um okay i'll, I'll choose the dire wolf then okay you focus the energies pushing it away from the orc and focusing it on the dire wolf and as you do you your eyes grow with, with a bright bright blue and the there is basically a puff of snow that just explodes and then like a snow globe the snow drizzles down and you see an unconscious dire wolf on the ground um so the dire wolf the dire wolf is asleep um and let's see uh, it's considered unconscious so can't move or speak drops where whatever it's holding and is prone Automatically fails strength and dexterity checks. Attack rolls against the creature of advantage. Any attack that hits the creature is a critical hit if the attacker is within five feet of the creature. Okay. Yeah. So with that, anything else you want to do? You want to move? Uh, I'm going to move up a little bit more towards the wolf. Okay. To get closer to the orc. Yeah, right. Just bring them all towards me. Uh, cocky sorcerer. All right, with that, it is the orc's turn. Um, he will easily, you know, parkour slide Smart. through the ice. Um, and with that, he's going to take an attack at you. Um, it's going to be a 17 to hit. Yeah, it hits. All right. He has nine points of slashing damage as he slides across and slashes you with the great axe. Taking nine points of damage, um, it cuts you across the arm um, and just 
messes up what is what used to be a very nice blue cloak. Um, I don't even flinch. Okay. Cocky adventurers. We'll see what happens further in the dungeon. With <laughs> that, the other orc will attack um, Raymond. For a 20 to hit. Oh, good you take four points of slashing damage. Um, and with that, uh, the direwolf stays asleep. It is Krogolf's turn. So I'm gonna record this. I'm gonna get there. Okay. Alright, and then I'm gonna... I'm going to use Primal Savagery. Okay. So, my... My big Goliath hands turn stone and clawed. And... Ooh, I can... Uh, I missed the shit out of that. I love how you say you're gonna regret this. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Curl you Goff did, did, did you? <laughs> gra- walks over towards the the Goliath, and in his head, realizing this might not be the best idea, starts to cast Primal Savagery, and his hand starts to glow um, a bright red. And as he does, a bit of ice trips his footing, and he goes prone onto the ground. The spell dissipates. Uh, where was I? I was standing there. You were considered prone. Uh, well, I still have 20 feet of movement. Let me use the rest of it to get unproned. Okay. That's it. So you get back on your feet, um, see the orc ahead of you, and um, anything else you want to try? That's it. All I got right. nothing else. I got no reaction. Uh, no bonus action. No problem. We are at the top of the turn order in what is this battle for the entrance of the lair of Calamore. Barmach, you have already slain an orc. There's still more blood up ahead around the corner, though. Uh, okay. I, I want to let out a loud battle cry, and I'd like to move uh, do, 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 25 feet up here. Okay. Um, I'm gonna hit you stupid bitches for being in the fucking way, god damn it! Why are you in the fucking way? Uh, you, do, you do have a few javelins on you. Actually, I wanna go here. Okay. Say you move towards us, what the fuck? <laughs> okay, so from the other side, um, you realize the course correction, and flank the orc. Go ahead and roll an attack. With advantage. Yes, sir. 26 will hit. 16. Damn. Oh. Jesus. All right. You <laughs> sneak around despite the screaming and blood craziness of the dwarf um, and strike him from behind. You still have a second attack. Um, your first strike slices through his back, revealing a very opening wound, um, cutting through the leather armor. Okay. I'll, oh, fuck it. Let's do it again. Jesus That'll Christ. Hit. And that literally will be just enough. Um, you slice him through the back. He drops to one knee, the perfect height for you. You bring the axe up high again over your head and sink it like chopping or cutting wood into the skull of the orc. Nothing! Cut out. Yeah, you cut out like a motherfucker. Nothing. Huh? Nothing. Fuck no. you. It's okay. okay. Um, Barmach <laughs> slays another orc, and there is only one left, to your knowledge, and an unconscious direwolf up ahead. Uh, with that, it would be Raymond's turn. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and right here, and I'm going to give myself lay on hands. So I have full health again. Uh, um, you're going to use how many points? Seven? Yes. Okay. Use it's an action to cast Lay on Hands. Yep. That's oh, you used it on Corfi or you? Uh, I mean, myself. Okay, so you're healing yourself for seven 
14? Yeah, 14. Yeah. Okay, so as an action, you cast Lay on Hands on yourself, heal yourself for 14, um, make it to the unconscious dire wolf. Um, anything else you want to try? Uh, I don't believe I have a bonus action. Uh, you do not have a bonus action that you could use in tandem with this, no. Okay, so then that's fine. I'll, I'll have my turn there. Okay. So with that, Corfir, you're up. Um, basically, most of the combatants are down. However, there's still the untorched orc to the north and an unconscious direwolf. Um, okay, so I'm going to move... Uh, no, that's over. Let's see. I don't want to hit anybody. So, fuck, man, that's over. You know what? Fuck it. Just gonna go over here. Um, and I'm gonna attack him twice with my long sword. Okay. Um, natural 20s. Yes. Good, get him out the way now. Um, nice. 14 points of damage as you strike the orc flanked. You still have one more attack. That'll hit. Uh, and eight. Nice. After a, two big sl slashes with your longsword, um, you strike at the dwarf's side, trying not to step on the ice that is formed into the slick um, ground, or push yourself into the, into the entanglement spell. Um, but with that, you strike him twice. Uh, he's still standing, however. But hurt. All right. Um, uh, yeah, that's that's it for my turn. Um, I twirl my sword and hold my shield up. Okay. Kusakabe, you're up. Right. Um, I'm going to... Hold up, I'm reading this real quick. Okay. Um, I am Remember, you've already cast Sleep, and you've already cast Blindness already. Remember, you have a finite amount of spells. Yeah, I have cantrips too, though. Okay, yeah. Cantrips you can use at will, and you can use them as much as you want. Okay. Um, I'm going to go shocking grabs the, the wolf. Okay. So, that's an automatic crit. Um, yeah. Because it's within five feet. So, go ahead and roll the attack, roll the damage, and then we double it. Oh, God. <laughs> well, the, 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 that doesn't matter, right? <laughs> <laughs> automatic wow. crit, right? Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I cannot believe you got the opposite of what it was. <laughs> As you look down, you don't notice the pool of water yeah, beneath the direwolf. <laughs> you grasp <laughs> at it, and immediately the shock of lightning singes through the fur of the direwolf and also your body. Oh no. Um, you both take, since it's your spell, I will say it, it takes the full amount of damage and you take half. So you take five right, points. Of, you take five points of lightning, um, and the creature takes ten points of lightning um, um, damage as you grasp at the fur and just start igniting. Um, the lightning starts to singe through your body, but you hold the spell onto it, and the the howling of the animal starts to shriek in all of your ears um but that would be uh that would be your turn unless you want to move no i'm okay okay you you catch a fucking death glance from Kurogoth, by the way i don't think he even notices um <laughs> yeah i'm not yet. Uh, worrying about the people yeah. in front of me i don't see you like, next to me just i'm the camera catches it. Could I make, could I make it worse for him? It actually felt good to be electrocuted. And then, mm. and then you hear the, like the low rumble and like the. So I'm gonna axe you in the face. Um, 
Oh my god. <laughs> uh, Coral Goth, um, you take eight points of slashing damage as you yes, growl that way. Um, a blade. <laughs> do, not, do, not <laughs> even, do not even take my gaze off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah everyone's immune to the pain of damage, apparently. Um, we'll see. Oh no, it hurt. It hurt yeah, like a bitch. Everyone, like, yeah, everyone's, tear, everyone's tear smiling and, and like, tear and I, I don't tear move and I, to, an axe, I don't I, to, to axes hurting me. I smile at orcs. Yeah, okay. We'll see what happens when the dragon's here. Get, get uh, them off. <laughs> so with that, um, uh, the uh, wolf is awake. It will use half its movement to stand up, and then it is going to bite the fucker that lightning knit. Um, that will be a 15 to hit. Kusakabe? Just hits. So I shield him. Oh, nice. Okay. So as it goes up to bite you, Raymond brings his shield just in the nick of time and blocks the strike um, from the wolf. It bites the hardened steel as it gets up from the ground. My man. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. With that, it is Krogaf's turn. You have you a very wounded life. orc <laughs> and about a half wounded dire wolf. Oh, actually, I am sorry. That wolf had advantage because of pack tactics and flanking. So I'm gonna roll again in case it's a crit. No, it's not. <laughs> Whatever. I'm gonna stash it with my shit now. <laughs> yeah, you and Mike are destined for one another. <laughs> Moving on, Kurogoff. After eating an axe like no one's, nobody can, um, what would you like to do? Can I make an animal handling check on the dire wolf? To uh, either gain its trust and make it uh, get it on our side. Um, what spell would you commit to that? Uh, I was hoping it was just animal handling because I don't have anything aside from just like just being a druid, honestly. I would say you can but it would be disadvantage since you are fighting the creature and its master is still alive so it would be your it would be up to you you would know that a creature wouldn't turn on its master especially against an enemy um it's possible but uh, but if i but if i kill him he's not gonna really be <laughs> it's up to you uh, not really gonna be like super in there anyway uh I'm gonna dodge action. Okay. You soon dodge. Bottom mark, you're up. Um, you have an orc and direwolf left. Uh, since he seems to be trying to befriend the. You don't orc, know that. Um, don't know I don't that. know that. He's assuming dodge. He just starts I know. to defend himself. Um, I can't really move anywhere because my distance is only 25 feet. A double axe to the back. Um,. You can move 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 to here. You could move through Corfear, but you would be uh -huh. you'd be moving on the ice. Uh, yeah, fuck it. I'll, I'll move on to the ice. Why, why the fuck not? Okay. So, um, like, what's going to happen is I'm going to slip and impale myself. Let's yeah. fucking go. Yeah, no problem. Make me a dexterity <laughs> saving throw. Okay. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. Yeah, not with advantage, but... Um, as you do rush towards him, you're like, what's the worst that could happen? You slide and slip on your dwarven <laughs> butt. Uh, you are considered prone. Um, and it did use all your movement to get there, so you That's technically right. can't get up, but you could still attack from the bot. From <laughs> the the shit. Oh my god, I very much want to go for his shins with my hand axe. <laughs> all right. So you want to spin, pull up. Spin on your back. You may pull out the hand axe. That is fine. Okay, am I at disadvantage no. because I'm prone? Nope. Am I at advantage because I'm flanking? Um, he is distracted. You are prone. It'll be a straight attack. It'll be a straight attack. Okay, I can deal with that. I better get his fucking kneecaps, man. <gasps> oh, heck yeah! That'll hit. Yay! That's, That's just not enough. Fuck! <laughs> Die, but, you bastard! But you yeah, do yeah. 300 uh, cut the calf of this. Oh, uh, I can immortal. attack again. Okay. Go ahead and attack a second <laughs> time. Just, just like <laughs> spinning on your back like it's a break. Oh my <laughs> <Christ>. <laughs> <laughs> yes! 
as you, you just oh as you slip and try to make up for the clumsiness you cut him at the shin and look up at him stubbornly hoping he's dead um he growls out in pain looks down at you angry and you stubbornly like a little child slap at it again and cut his foot off um, you see the t the tr stall stall the stalwart um, orc fall like a tree towards the ice, and as he does, he falls to the ground, um, lifeless. Well, screaming in pain, and then uh, I guess in thirty seconds he'll die. I, um, I want to say for the record that I'm still sliding on my ass in slow circles around this shit. <laughs> Sure. Like, I'm still spinning, like, north. Like, sure. I'm just, I'm sliding. <laughs> no problem. I'll give it. But I'm screaming in victory as I'm sliding. It looks kind of ridiculous, but it's fine. It's fine. I got it. No problem. So with <laughs> that, um, after Barmok slays the final uh, orc, Raymond, you're up. Uh, I'm going to move up right here. Okay. And uh, I'm going to hammer it. Okay. Oh, you're getting such a stare. Such a stare. Oh. <laughs> Eight points of damage. Okay. The it's a hardy it's a hardy beast. Oh. Eleven will not hit. Um, as you slam at the creature, it will dodge your second strike as your hammer slams into the ground, um, uh, cracking into the the hardened ice. Um, but the creature's still standing. Uh, would you like to move? Uh, <clears throat> no, I think I'll stay. Actually, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to move back right next to Okay. Kabe. With that, Kusakabe, you're up. Creature is pretty wounded, but standing. It is not prone. Yeah. Wait, did you just get my turn? Um. Oh, yeah, you, I think I did, you did. I did, yeah. So, Corfu, you're up. Um. You know, should have thought this through before I told you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Eh. Okay, that's... <laughs> that's it? Right. Well, I'm gonna move over there. Um... Uh... I don't have anything. All we need is someone to come from the right side to get us collateral damage. So, um... Just a word, there's still a lot of dungeon to go. And this has been two hours, so I would wrap it up. Okay. I'll wrap it up. Um, now that it's done. Oh my god. Uh, seven. Seven, will, seven damage will be uh, good, but it is a hardy beast. Nice. Because it's again. 19. 19 will hit. 14. 14. 14 will just be enough. How do you want to do this? Um, well, first. Uh, the first, like, shadow that appears behind him bashes it on the back, uh, making it go prone. Okay. And the second one kind of, like, projects itself from the ground as a sword rises up right through its neck and right back into the ground. Okay, nice. Um, the shadow pierces out with a sharpness, um, impossible to behold and sinks back in and the creature whimpers one last time um a wounded animal and the blood starts to spread amongst the ice and soak in uh get uh, absorbed into the snow and ice around you and leak into the cracks looking around you see the rest of the chamber start to draw silent the enemies defeated the orcs dead. You have secured the entrance. This is gonna be hard. <laughs> All right, uh, everybody, heal up. We have to uh, keep going. Uh, does anybody want to like hand me some help? <laughs> um, no pun intended. Up, before we do, I would just check around generally around by the orcs or wherever to see if I see any specifically potions. Um, go Anything ahead and make an investigation check. Do I notice... Oh my God, never mind. No, no heals. I know what I have. 
Do I notice any soft dirt? Or is this all ice? This is all ice. You will you would have this entire layer has been burrowed into <coughs> a mountain that is made of hard ice and stone that has been frozen over for thousands of years. Uh, um, Adam. Yes. Uh, real quick, uh, am I allowed to take a proportion at any time? Yeah. Um, during combat, it takes a bonus action to take a one for yourself and an action to feed it to someone else. So I can, like, attack and then bonus action yes. use it? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's yeah. all I need to know. Um, so, um, Corfir, looking around the bodies, um, you do find um, weapons. You do find um, what look to be some assortment of dried fish. Um, some of it actually a lot fresher, but no magic items, nothing, no healing potions, um, nothing that you feel would aid you in this moment. Um, but you do, on the shaman, find what looks to be a very nice, pure diamond. Um, Alright, nice. It's, um, small, it's just... small in the hand, but it is... looks to be flawless. Okay. Um, I would just real quick, looking around the weapons, um, I go over to uh, Kuzakabe. Uh, I don't know if you have any thing to protect you with, melee-wise, but there's plenty of weapons around. Help yourself. My bad, uh, Mr. Salgatini. What did you say? Uh, I just go over to you, and I, I just say, uh, I noticed that you are a spellcaster, you know, I don't know if you have any melee weapons to protect yourself with, but there's plenty around, so grab what you can, if needed. I switch around to see if I find one? Yeah, you find plenty. There's great axes, there's some javelins, um, probably some, not, nothing wieldy for you like a long sword or something like that but um they seem to be very heavy weapons here is there a warhammer around i can take um looking about the orcs there doesn't seem to be a warhammer amongst them they all seem to be wearing ba uh, wearing battle axes um you also <clears throat> notice there doesn't seem to be an armory or something here um maybe it's further in the lair or something but um Corfir, why don't you make a intelligence check? Okay. <clears throat> uh, oh great, this is the one embedded. Nine. Yeah, no. Mm. Just no. Just no. <laughs> so. All right, guys, uh, we should continue moving. Uh, yeah. Farmox slips on, on the ice. Yeah, a little bit. All right. I, I, uh, can I, can Buttermock get help? Yeah. I, we'll help I, her up. I, I pull you out of the ice. Mm -hmm. Chris Akabe um, also trips on the ice. I pull them both out. Okay, guys, relax. Appreciate this. All right. Um, I guess just on the way, I'd heal myself for the eight points I took, um, using my lightning hands. Uh, and again, I cast my dancing white friend. Okay. As you move deeper into this, um, and the path turns to the right, you see to the, um, that um, um, there was an altar that looked to be this, um, somewhat of an homage to a dragon creature amongst the three cauldrons, um, but nothing significant. Further, you see a pathway that leads up, higher into the mountain. And this looks to be a massive ice slide this slope of pure smooth Ooh. ice that ascends 50 feet up i look back to the team and i just yell serves up to do it it's it's, it's upward it's up. it's it's upward yeah i was gonna dive oh, down it's it's downward like, okay no, well, i, was gonna I die still say ass. it i still <laughs> say it and i do this and i just go <laughs> back down yeah you move you move 10 feet up and then uh, Slide back down. Uh, <laughs> can I, um, can I use my hand axes to scale it? Oh my god. Sure. Uh, I want to do that. 
Hold on, hold on. That's probably not I'll, a good idea. I'll try to help you guys out. Um, I cast Spider Climb myself. Um, and I start to climb up. I'm gonna use my hand axes to bring my ass up. If any weakling watch, would like assistance, off, huh? grab onto Bartomach's ankles. So, shoot. <laughs> that helped me out. All right, let's go. So, Barmok, <laughs> make me up in or Corfier. Um, you immediately slide down. Um, make me a dexterity saving throw. Spider Clown doesn't do that. Oh, spider climbing you you cast. Okay, my apologies. Yeah. Um, so no, you okay. sump, 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 sump. Now is up here flat. <laughs> okay. Oh, <man. laughs> um, so. Oh, is that the problem? I will say it again now. Make me a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> okay. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh man. Oh my God! I wouldn't go 17. so high. <laughs> Not bad, but still. Um. You take four points of uh, piercing damage as you thump, 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 hey, it goes higher. And just from beneath you, jettisoning up, a bear trap reaches up oh, and clamps <laughs> towards you. You just dodge out of the way, but it grabs onto your the meat of your thigh and just oh. basically Ow. eats into you. Um, Inner thigh? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Um, and you you realize that you have um hold on one second uh, realize you stepped onto a trap you bitch wait how high oh my god hi <laughs> um, he's high up there by the way he's about forty feet up now um. However, Barmok, since you're gonna be digging in with your hand axes, go ahead and make an athletics check with advantage. Uh, jeez. Never mind. I'm not gonna say. Don't, don't say shit. <laughs> okay. Um, 25. With 25, you could move your full movement anywhere you want. So, where would you like to go? Uh, do, 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 do. I'll, I'll go here. Wait. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Wait. Pause. Can I still be hatched onto her legs? <laughs> Where are you starting from? Where are you moving? One square at a time. Okay. I'm going to. Okay. All right. Bad. Everyone who moves more than two squares will automatically trigger anything that I feel maybe. Look how they get the fuck off. Okay. okay. So I started here. I'm going to the car off and be like, so what do you think? What are we doing All right. Here, yeah. Buddy? I'm here. So I'm going to do five. Can. 15, 20. Okay. 25. That was nice. Um, right here, a bear trap. Oh, yeah. Yes. I thought she went around that. I did. She did, oh, okay. and then she went into it. <laughs> oh, I did? Oh. She went here, and then she went here, and then she went here. So right here is when it hits. No, I didn't. I went here, here, and then here. All right. For you, I will say that, but I am Thank recording. <laughs> Okay, that's and, fine. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but it's I could have okay. sworn 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Yeah, I could have sworn right. it was like that. For now, the dwarf gets hers. Anyone else want to step on a bear trap? No, I'm right. I mean, I don't even know how to get the hell up there, to be okay. honest with you. Barmok just ting, ting, starts hand axing up it. Corfir's more than halfway up the top, um, standing there, trying not to move now, not trying to trigger any traps, and... The rest of you are at the bottom. Adam, mm -hmm. I lied. I did hit the bear trap. Give oh, me I the know. damage. I know. <laughs> I know. I just remembered where I went. Give me the yeah. damage. I feel bad Wait, now. So... I'm an asshole. That's all right. All right. Let's do all right. That. Adam. Yes. This is uh, a complicated okay. question. A dexterity saving throw. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Kusakabe. Oh! So... You take no I'm damage. Bad. You dodge it. You're good. See, Yay! honesty is rewarded. I felt real bad. I was like, so, wait a minute, wait. At the 50 feet mark, is that a flat surface? Yes. All right. So can I use dimension door? Yes, you can. Oh, my God. Would you like All to? right. Yes, I would like to. Okay. And what square would you like to land on? 
And there, this is the tricky part. Um, let me think. But you get that dimension door pretty far. It's up to 500 feet, but you have to have seen it or know yeah, of it. Yeah, see it. So, yeah, I have to see it. So basically, so, up to that line. Okay. Yeah, basically, yeah. up to here is where you can get up to. That's the furthest you can go. Okay. Because uh, it's kind of like an incline. You can, like see the foot. So where do you want to go? Also, you can, if you dimension door, remind your, you can remember, uh, remembering you can take another creature with you. That is yeah. the same size okay. or smaller. <laughs> okay, I guess we'll know what's coming. All right, you grab Raymond and you go, and you think real big uh, momentarily at what you saw, and you go, and you both disappear, and then you both reappear. Um, right, my metal eye. Um, Who's at this point, up here, Raymond my, here. My dancing lights is trying to reach for me. Okay. So I can pull me up. Okay. Um, it's trying to reach for you, but behind your dancing lights, you see a blink of light and Kusakabe and Raymond zoop, appear behind you. Uh, hey guys. As can, you can, I, can I reach up and grab him? Yeah. Oh, you're not restrained, Corpio. You dodged it. You just took the damage. Oh, I thought I was stuck in the trap. Sorry. No, no, okay. yeah. I was just okay. saying well, that's where up. you stopped when you oh. got hit by the trap. You do move up oh, forward. Okay, yeah. um, Barmok, no another athletics check. And what are you doing, Kurogath? I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, I will try to... Mark off that uh, dimension door, by the way. Yeah. Um, Barmok, want to make an level. athletics check? Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm going to produce flame. I'm going to try. So, dancing lights. Um, yeah. Ah, sorry, yeah, I'll, I'll call you back in a minute. Disappears. Um, mm -hmm. Produce flame, and I step back a little bit so I don't melt too much. I'm going to try to melt a little, like, um, like a little pocket into the into the ground. Um, is there anything solid? Oh my God. Any solid ground that I reach? You're trying to melt the ground? No, I'm trying to like the. I'm trying to melt the ice. See if there's solid ground beneath it. Just a little pocket. Um, as you continuously melt, it's just really hard ice. Um, that has is just the makeup of the mountain. Um, it seems to be whatever. Okay. It doesn't right. seem to be a natural set of ice. Okay. So I'll. So I guess around three feet mm -hmm. or so. I. I just call it, um, and I'm gonna throw down um, hemp and rope down, and I'm gonna try to uh, fasten the okay. rope up here. All right, that's easy enough. You stake it into the ground um, and throw the rope down to the bottom, um, and everyone else can now start climbing up with advantage. So, Kurgov, well, if you want to make an athletics check. Yeah, yeah, let me use the rope. Okay. 11. With good advantage because oh, of the rope. Yeah, it's a rope. Uh, 13. Okay. So you can move your full movement any square amount of squares you want up the path. If the trap is already triggered, does it no. again? No. So these two are expended. Alright. And then where does this, where does my 30, does I hit the whip oh no you move move a square for each and i'll tell yeah but like i know but like i move i move 30 is that does that constitute five there to there or am i counting 30 from i like, would ice say to... from the I bottom of the ice up your choice okay oh no reason to deviate okay. five and 15 20, 25 30. oh barmak you made it to the top you're fine okay cool yeah okay so another athletics check. Nice. Oh, after some after some movement, it is a hard incline. But after a while, this is your element. You're a Goliath. And you just hand over fist, just make it to the top easily. You are now all at the top of this slide. However, looking around the bend, you see another raised incline another 
ice slide that you must traverse to continue pushing higher into the lair. Question for you. Does the ethereal plane follow the plane we're currently on? Yes. Is ice ice in that no. realm as well? No. Um, also, uh, it, it says I can transfer over if I want some sorcery uh, points to my spell slots. Yes, you can basically like sacrifice some sorcery points and turn it into a spell slot. Yeah, can I do that? Yeah. Um, which, which, how many do you want to... What spell slot do you want? Are you trying to refill? Uh, the, the door. Oh, the dimension door? Four? Fourth level? Yeah, but do it, can I just put that into my spell slots to like use for any of them? Yeah, you can. You choose a spell like you will choose like a level three or a level four or a level two, and then you would expect, and then you would sacrifice your sorcery points to get that. So I think. So let's see. I think for a fourth level. Uh, let's see. It's a lot, isn't it? Um, not necessarily for him. Um, at ninth level, you have nine sorcery points. And um, six. Yeah, so six po um, six points you can expend now and get your fourth level back. You'll still have three left, which is still good. So, but it's a fourth. Yeah, I can level use on a six or another fourth. Uh, you 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 have to use six sorcery points to get back a fourth level spell slot. So if you expend six now, you would have your fourth level dimension door back. Hmm. No, I'll hold it. I'll yeah, wait. You can also do it later um, as a bonus action if you wanted to. So you could okay. even cast a spell and then bonus action create a new spell by sacrificing your, your points. So, so if you needed it in that moment, you could do it then. Gotcha. All right. So um, what would you guys like to do? You're all at the top of this, but there is now a curve to the right up another 50-foot so, in, um, incline. So dancing lights again. He comes back. Um, I take out a javelin now and kind of use it to walk, um, so I'm not like slipping okay. too much. Um, and I'm gonna have him go a little bit forward um, with, you know, ease because you know, he's conjuration. Um, and want to see if there's any traps immediately in like this vicinity make that a, we're about to walk. Make a percept make a investigation check can we reclaim that hempen rope sure uh, mm -hmm. I, 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 yeah you can take it i, I mean yeah. i would have probably taken it by now but i didn't say it so go ahead with a 20 okay. um this entire area does not seem to your knowledge or perception to be um disturbed in any way you do see these jagged pieces of ice shooting from the wall and it's at an angle too so it's meant to skewer anything that would just fall back down from this um this slide um there are these pillars that kind of jettison into the ceiling but nothing to your knowledge uh, okay so trap. i'll move up and i will tell everybody um that when uh when you guys climb up just stay in the middle here there's seems as if if you slip you will die um so, I'm assuming that it starts to go up here. Uh, yeah. Okay. The, um, th this is all, everything past this square is up. Upward. Okay. So, same, so I'm going to go right up to, like, the edge before it starts to curve up. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Dancing lights. He's going to just walk on it with ease, walking mm -hmm. up, trying to reveal, again, if there's any traps. If I can notice, can I uh, follow behind him in his direct steps? Yeah. Yeah, I would. I walked very slowly, um, and I told you all to just stay in the middle here, so that we don't get skewered. Yeah. Okay. Make an investigation check. All right. Looking around, um, there's no sign that there's any traps like before. Um, especially up as your glow wheels just start to light up more of the shadow. Seems pretty good. So we could all follow behind him? Mm-hmm. 
So fuck it. Same thing. Spider climb. Um, very slowly. Uh, he I turned around to Raymond and uh, Kusikade. Uh, sorry, Kusikabe. All right. Uh, I can't notice any traps. I will. Oh, I will be very slow, and I'll give you guys the go ahead. If I get hurt, just uh, yeah, I get hurt. Um, so spider climb, mm -hmm. um, and I take it one step at a time, okay. very slowly. I'm not gonna make the stupid mistake <laughs> as I did before. As I'm walking, he says. Climb. He says out loud. <laughs> well, I, well, I would be walking up. My my friend would look over at me and he would be telling me, "Don't make the stupid mistake." And I just feel like, mm -hmm. "I'm not." All right, relax. No one else hears him speak. Is this climb? This is another wall to climb up. This, yeah, everything past this, this uh, is you have to tr climb up. So you'll need something to help you. All right. No, no, stay down, stay down. Like, I'll help you guys. Okay. You're doing well. You keep making your way up, um, and you start to see the top of it, and the ice turns to the familiar ground that you're used to in the chamber before. Um, hard, but textured ground. Do you have the rope that... Uh... I, I have another, because I, I had, um, what do you call it, a, another uh, pack, because of my um, background. Um... And then, all right, guys, I'm high up. Would have been fucked. I fall, <laughs> I fall. Catch me. Yeah, he's pretty high up. And he gets to the top, okay. and nothing. No traps. Okay. He's at the top. All right. Safe so same sound. thing. Starts to stick. Five feet. Yeah. Yeah, five feet behind me, just so it gets a little bit better of a grip. Okay. Um. So I would and, say yeah. with that, everyone just make a group uh, athletics check with advantage. Uh, and my my friend will be dancing up here while he awaits everybody. Okay, so the group, after the next couple of minutes, um, five to ten minutes, you guys take your time. He brings the rope um, down this uh, the ramp. This entire structure just seems just unwarranted, unfriendly. It's definitely designed to keep people out and the more you feel the the tension of trying to g progress through this as you all get more and more higher uh, barmak and kurglaf you can move your characters um you no lexi <laughs> oh my god oh jesus christ I will, I, I will say she didn't hit any of the traps. Full screen. <laughs> oh. That's why I did that. <laughs> oh my god. I had a rope down there. <laughs> but you all, she I couldn't the see rope. the full screen. Did she though? It's okay. Did she, did, was, was that spot trapped? Like, did she get super? She would have taken uh, the rope, <laughs> is what I'll say. Oh. Um, you all make it to the top and look down <laughs> to see the incline just. If you were to slide down now, it would be almost impossible to guide your path. You might be skewered by the, the spikes at the end. And you're starting to realize the further you go, there is a point of no return here. Um, and as you guys gather yourselves at the top of this, um, you see that up ahead, the um, path, uh, the hallway curves to the right and then opens up into a new area. And with that, we're going to take a quick break. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go okay. get food. All right. Excellent. Good game, guys. So far, I'll be back. Okay. Absolutely. Good game. Good game.